So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the spreadsheet Clinopyroxene PT 2020 version 3. But if you have any earlier versions or later versions, they'll be structured pretty much the same way, mostly because I'm too lazy to make major changes. So the tab we're going to spend most of our time in is this one here, Clinopyroxene Input and Models. Uh, this is where we have our inputs and also the outputs that will probably be of major interest. There's an instructions tab here, but we could skip that because this YouTube is really about an overview of how to do things that are listed there. So the gray field, everything that is input, everything that's shown in gray, this is stuff that you have to enter. You will have to enter a liquid composition, something that uh, your pyroxene crystal precipitated from. If you have a glass composition or a whole rock of some kind, then that might be a good place to start. In another video, we'll look at tests of equilibrium to see if it, that liquid really is a good choice. And you'll also have to decide here for a coefficient, how much iron uh, is in the two plus state. This is total iron is plus two. Uh, and you could pro it's probably best to leave it as, as one because that's the way the models were calibrated. Even if the experimental data had values that were less than one, since they were calibrated with one, it's probably good to leave that alone. But it's there if you want to change it to 0.5 or 0.6 and see how it might affect your PT estimates, you, you have a way of doing that. So this is one input, the liquid composition. Usually we start with the whole rock. Then there is the pyroxene composition here in columns T through AC. All these gray values are values for pyroxene compositions. And the way we've paired up is that this pyroxene was found in this whole rock, although in this case I'm showing experimental data from Cistern Grove. Then the blue values are the output, the first output cell is this one here. It's a model for water saturation. You can compare that to a water value that you input over here. So uh, this is really just for fun. Maybe it's useful, maybe it's not. But if you have a liquid that is a, a value, uh, valid liquid composition, and if the PT values that we show over here in blue are valid, uh, then this would be the estimate for what the water content would be if the system is saturated with water. Uh, so all of the other fellows in blue here uh, from columns AE out to oh, out to BJ, all of those blue columns are various models for pressure and temperature estimation. The default here for tests of equilibrium will involve these models for Neve and Paterka 2017. David Neve found an error with the 2003 models, or really a, not so much an error so much as a shortfall. They didn't work very well uh, for certain kinds of compositions at a low pressure, and so these new models fix that problem. Uh, but if you're going to use, uh, let's say, the models for basalts from oceanic basins that are relatively dry, that might erupt and look something like, uh, as something that would look like Hawaii or at a mid-ocean ridge, then the 1996 models might work a little bit better. And then for comparison, the 2003 models are here. And then this is uh, just another way of looking at the 90, 1996 models. Here, this is the 1996 uh, barometer paired with the 1996 thermometer. But you can also see over here the 1996 barometer paired with a newer uh, thermometer that was published in a RIMG volume. So that's what all of these show, various, various models and various combinations. And then out here we're going to spend a separate video on this. These are tests of equilibrium. The observed clinopyroxene components are from the compositions that you entered over here. So these values uh, do not uh, they have anything to do with pressure and temperature per se. Uh, the values for observed clinopyroxene compositions are just transposing your oxides into a diopside, hedenbergite, encetite, ferrocellite, CATS component, etc. And then we compare those to predicted values. These predicted values do not use the values that you entered uh, over here in columns AT, or excuse me, T through AC. Instead, they use the liquid composition and the estimates of pressure and temperature and ex uh, experimentally calibrated models to see what the components should be if you have something that looks like an experimentally equilibrated system. And if you do, then these numbers should be close. And again, we'll look at that in another video. Uh, over here is a PT plot. By default, this plot shows data for uh, the models of Paterka and Neve over here in 2017. 
uh, if you want to show something else, instead of plotting columns A, F, and A, G, for example, you could instead change those to plot A, H versus A, I. Uh, or, well, it's marked as centigrade, so you'd want to change the units here if you wanted to use those also. So in any case, if you want to uh, plot something else, you'll have to do a little bit of editing. Uh, then we have tests of equilibrium. Again, that'll be devoted to another video. A triangular diagram over here. It's kind of a classic way of classifying klein pyrrhicksen compositions. And then the Rhodes diagram, another test of equilibrium that we'll also look at in another video. The Rhodes diagram is a way of testing iron magnesium exchange equilibrium, and it's using a theoretical value shown here in Rhodes diagram calcs. So here the default value is 0.27. We can change it to 0.3. That'll shift those curves. If you want to look at instead of one sigma era uh, of 0.03, you can look at two sigma of 0.06, and that'll widen those dashed lines a bit. So you can play some games with those, and those will be compared, coming back to the CPX and models tab, to the observed values here. This is based on the observed pyroxene and liquid composition. It has nothing to do with pressure and temperature uh, per se. The, the PT calcs don't go into with this. So it's just a way of seeing if you've found the right liquid to match with the pyroxene that you have analyzed. And then there are some additional parameters that are based on clinopyroxene compositions only. I will end up looking at entering some data. What I would do normally is I would take this last line and then just fill down uh, X number of columns. So I'll just hit the fill down. Now I get, oh, 20 some odd copies of this last row of Cisnodal uh, experiment 8266. Of course, I don't need 20 copies of that. I'll come back to another spreadsheet where here I've got whole rock compositions and clinopyroxenes where the oxides are in the same order as in the spreadsheet of the 2020 PT estimates. So I'll just grab a bunch of compositions here. I'll just take this many down to row 23, and then I'll come back to Kleinopyrxin 2020, and then I'll head over to the first cell here, and those are the whole rock compositions. I don't need those last two rows since I chose fewer rows over here. Come back to the Chaos Crags. These are data from Scruggs and Paterka, by the way. So I'll take the same number of rows here. Those are the clinopyroxenes that were found in these particular whole rocks. We'll copy those. Come back to CPX 2020. And it started on this row here, row 19. So row 19, we'll hit Edit Paste. And there we have our pyroxene compositions. I don't really need these compositions up here, but before I delete those experimental data, I'm going to adjust the PT plots. So the data that I'm interested in, uh, oh, I should carry over the labels so we know what we're looking at. So Chaos Crags is Dome A in this case. Those are the data that I've taken. Those are from the Lassen Volcanic Center. So I'll just put... A for the dome, and this is from Lassen, so I'll just make a note here that these are not the experimental data. Oh, by the way, you can leave these blank. I think I've grabbed these from another, um, mod those, those are the experimental data, the, the reported values for the experiment, so you can, you don't have to really do anything with these, you can just erase all of those. But here's the key thing, we have data from rows 19 to 37, that's what we want to plot here, so I'm going to select those data, and instead of going 15 to 19, we're going to go 19 to 37. So we're going to make that edit. Again, rows 19 to 37. So when we plot those PT estimates, we're not plotting the experimental data. We're plotting the stuff from the chaos crags. Test for equilibrium, same kind of thing. We'll come back and look at this in another uh, diagram. But just to play the game here, 19 to 37. We'll see how it fits here. I don't know if these are going to work or not. 19 to 37. Ah, we get a pretty good fit. So that's nice. And then for the triangular diagram, we want to make this rows 19 to 37. And then 19 to 37 again. So we're not plotting the experimental data. Those are our data from Chaos Crags. Rhodes Diagram, same kind of edit, 
19 to 37. So the 15 becomes a 19, and the 19 becomes a 37. So one more edit. There we go. So now we're looking at the Chaos Crags data. And from our tests of equilibrium, it looks like they're matching pretty well. It looks like the predicted diopside Hedenberg values are very close to the observed components. That's a one-to-one -one line. I haven't adjusted the values here, so I'm not sure what the N-type ferrocillite or CATS components are doing. And then in the Rhodes diagram, it looks like uh, the whole rocks are working really well as a match for these particular clinopyroxenes. They're all within the error bounds of plus or minus 0.06. Well, let's make that just one sigma. Let's make it a little more restrictive. And I think the RIMG value we use 0.27. So let's try those values. Oh, well, they're close. That, that's not too bad. Uh, but again, that's probably uh, good for another video. And then once we have those set, we can actually delete all these data. We don't really need them uh, so we can come in and select these rows if you wanted to and then, and then just hit the lead. I'm just going to leave them in there for now. One last thing, if you get a bunch of crazy values here, if you get any error uh, um, uh, signals from Excel, what that might mean, is, especially if it says circular reference, is you'll have to do one last thing. Excel, preferences, go to calculation, this box needs to be checked. You have to use iterative calculation in 100.001 should work well. Why do we need that? Because if we take a look at the equation here for the barometer, that is based on this thermometer in column AE, but if we take a look at the thermometer, that's based on the barometer. So we are telling Excel by clicking that iteration box in the calculations tab to use numerical methods to solve these simultaneously. If you don't have that box checked, then you will get a uh, circular reference uh, error and Excel won't perform the calculation. So you always want that box checked and values of 100 and 0.01 are pretty good values to get uh, the numerical models to work. I'm not sure what they are. It might be newton raphson uh, I've never really looked it up, but they seem to convert, converge pretty well. So that's it. In another video, we'll take a look at some tests of equilibrium. And then in another one, I uh, will look at questions of what kind of liquids to choose? How do we, what if the whole rocks don't work well? What if we don't get a nice neat test for equilibrium? And let's say this cluster of data plots way out here or up here somewhere. So how do we fix that? So we'll take a look at that in another video.